actual sunlight is all that's left. Let me just deactivate and reactivate Elgato. Why are you still green, damn it? Hmm. That's weird. Maybe when we start the next game, it'll sort its shit out. Um, let's just change this. So, actual sunlight. There it is. Done. Let me quickly check my emails. Uh, Twitch. Nauseam is now following you on Twitch. Check email. Yep, you can go. Yeah, not so why, sure why it's green, but anyway, let's start up this game and then hopefully it will sort itself out. I think it might just be a resolution mismatch. Ah, that's right, this thing's windowed. Bloody hell. Uh... It. All right, give me a couple minutes, uh, seconds. Let's see if we can fix it. Exit you for now. Let's minimize you. If this will fix it, then if I deactivate and reactivate, no, that can do it. Okay, one other thing I can try. Let me just put this back to what it's supposed to be. All right, the next thing to try is to restart Elgato. So seconds. Plug you back in. I think it's going to swap over onto that side again. We go and now if we reactivate Deactivate and reactivate. Come on. Yes. Does that. All right, let's bring back up Steam. And let's play actual sunlight. I know, right? Switching off and on again. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Let's see, maximize that. Unfortunately, this is windowed. Uh, could cause some issues. Let's see. Yeah, we want English. Please note, actual sunlight deals with extremely mature themes, including depression and thoughts of suicide. This is a fun way to win the night. Man, I cannot come. Player discretion is strongly advised and this game is not appropriate for players under the age of 18. So anyone under the age of 18, please leave now. This, this, this is going to get heavy. Yes. Why kill yourself today? Okay. When you could masturbate tomorrow. 
by Evan Winter. We're not actually going to see any of that shit, are we? Because I, I don't want that on my stream. I know what you're thinking. Why keep getting up day in and day out, even though your life is going nowhere? No raises. No promotions, no hope, no future. And let's face it, no love. But don't feel bad for yourself. Feel bad for exploited immigrants who have their fingers shattered while stocking shelves on the graveyard shift at monolith retailers. Feel bad for the soldiers of pointless wars who have their arms blown off by IEDs. Feel bad for arthritic long-haul truck drivers who need every firm grasp sorry, gauge they have left for the dark roads and bottom-crashing races ahead. No matter how bad things get, none of those people can live the life that you can. A life of pathetic, dick-punching resignation. I feel like this game was made for me. You are lucky. You have food, you have water, and you have shelter. Shelter that specifically includes at least one room with a locking door, an internet connection, and a computer you don't share with your elderly parents. No king leaves you too exhausted from one type of hammering to indulge in another. No bishop leaves you to tell you not to bash yours. Uh, there are, uh, there has been a better time in the history of mankind. There has never been a better time in, in the history of mankind, to be completely. So, I have been doing this for ten and a half hours now, so my reading skills are going downhill. Quickly, you devastatingly alone. And yet, here you are, thinking about giving up on the good times. Not realizing that you still have so much to live for that there is still so much to jerk off to. After all, the world is alive. Alive with people as fat, shallow, and broken as you are. Ha <laughs> ha! You don't have to tell me twice. Alive with beautiful women that have been lied to all their lives, who get on buses bound for your pornography. Alright then. Alive with the seething sadness of all our breaking dreams. And I hope that you read these words and realize that there is still so much inside of you just waiting to come out. I hope you promise yourself to live to see the day that you truly fall in love at first sight. Lock your eyes onto a look you've waited a lifetime to see. Hit the pause button, take a deep breath, and know what it would be like to be wanted, even if it isn't for the right reasons, by anybody. If only for a moment, Patient transcript. Evan Winter. Doctor, why did you set your alarm for 5 a.m. every morning even though you would never get up for it? Why hit snooze for two hours, patient? I wanted to start exercising. I mean, look at me. I had to, doctor. Then why didn't you? I don't know. I guess the night before you feel like tomorrow will be different. Every night you think tomorrow is the day you're going to do it. Start exercising. Start everything. Z to interact. No, try everything. X to save and quit. F4 to toggle the full screen. F4, there we go. Four nine seven y University of Toronto. Instructor Evan Winter. First day, lecture notes. The first thing you should know about being a writer is that it will turn you into a person who will find every excuse not to write. In fact, like many things in life, the more you want it to happen, the stupider about it you will get. A lot of people will never relate to this. A lot of people don't know what it's like to badly want something that very few people will ever get to have. And I'm not talking about money or fame, obviously. Everybody wants that. 
I'm talking about the deeply felt desire to say something that is painful in a way that is both beautiful and true, but without discipline, this desire will melt you into a crazy miserable shithead. I'll give you an example. I remember when I decided that enough was enough and that I was go finally going to get serious about becoming an author. I went straight to the nearest bookstore to buy every book about writing that I could get my hands on. I was prepared to do anything. <coughs> Absolutely anything, except actually sit down and write. There were so many books that I felt I had to read before I could attempt to write anything that I bought a $300 e-reader instead of trying to carry them all home. Of course, I also planned to actually start uh, to actually read all the books that I had supposedly read in school. That e-reader sat on my nightstand and collected dust for years. Oof. Assembly instructions. Sawdust dresser by Evan Winter. One, attempt to open box. Failed to do so. And rip corrugated cardboard into pieces until dresser parts are exposed. Two, consider insistence of two-person assembly to be personal indictment of character and discrimination towards sad loners. Mutter homophobic indignities about uppity Scandinavians and their perfect little shoebox existences. Three, figure out that assembly of dresser will require actual tools and not just syringe thin Allen keys. Run downstairs to convenience store and uh, that thrives on overpriced sundries for emasculate condominium man children. For emasculate. Uh. Buy knockoff Chinese screwdriver for three times normal retail price. Four, assemble dresser, periodically stopping to drink alone and stretch out re aggravated lower back injuries. Five, screw up assembly at the very end such that the dresser looks completely fine, but drawers are fixed in place and do not actually open. Six, turn structure completely around completely. Expose an open rear side of dresser and remove top drawer entirely rendering entire dresser as a giant open hole. Seven, realize that nobody will probably ever see how fucked up this is. That it wouldn't be a criteria if any girl was actually willing to come here in the first place. And that you're probably just going to leave all of your clothes hanging over furniture or stuck in the dryer anyways. Eight, live with it. Review, A, wake. The Something Awful Forums by Redwinder47. <laughs> I'm posting this review because I think the community that has built up around this game is nothing but a moronic circle jack. People have taken the fact that it has some false silver of artistic, false slither of artistic credibility and blown it out to ridiculousness as a way of feeling better about something that we all know is true about video games, that they are a shitty and aesthetic way that we have spent our shitty anesthetized lives. It is not great that the game has 10 different endings that require over 100 hours of average gameplay uh, playtime to see. That's just a way of making you feel like you could be special, which is exactly what you never have. It is not romantic that the game deals with broad themes of loneliness and despair. You are actually alone. You are actually in despair. Bloody hell. Ah, this goes on hard. You know there is nothing romantic about it. None of it includes a longing gaze into the moonlight. It's just pizza pop up, uh, pops and perversion until you have a stroke and your parents spend their retirement looking after you. Finally, it is not filled with rich, textured characters whose relationships and dialogue will pull at your heartstrings. It is hours of endless drivel that proffers completely childish conceptions of intimacy and togetherness for the sole and pandering purpose of tricking you into the fake warmth of delusioning, delusionally believing that you relate to something that you only wish you did. And you believe these things because you are nothing. You've never read a book that didn't have a dragon or a laser gun on the cover. You live in a filthy dark room with a laptop and a soda stained mouse pad. And you play A. Wake, uh, Alan Wake, I'm guessing, not because it is about human beings, but because you desperately wish you were a human being in the first place. But you are not.
You are not the hero. You are the monster. User was banned for this post. Reason? TLDR. Oof. Do you really need to use the bad F word? Alright, let's go. So tired. What, you want to sleep? Junior Assistant Exec Administrator CEO Office. Two, Director Corporate Communication. Subject, no subject. We'd like you to look at the transcript below and develop new messaging for transitional con compensation interviews by Close of Business. Program is excellent. So this problem is obviously in how your shop is telling HR to pitch it. Begin transcript, HRVP. Thanks for coming in this morning, Evan. To closing, sure. Candidate, I'm guessing that means. I wish we were meeting under better circumstances. Time and time again, I've said that the one thing we need in this company, besides our top executive talent, are young people. Young people who don't just go back to bed instead of waking up. Young people who don't just walk around in a trance as if they have no future. Young people who won't let their peers down, even when they're asked to do more with less. And a long pause. Sounds like it would be a shame to lose young people like that. I couldn't agree more. That's why I really hope you'll consider staying on with us, even though your compensation package will be transitioning from a direct model to an experimental one. A what? A new perspective. A new opportunity to really show us what you're made of. I just want to be completely clear on this. You're talking about no money, right? Well, the philosophy that we're embracing is something that we call life stage based compensation. Bloody hell. Ooh. We want to hone in on exactly what the needs are for each of our employee groups based on their current life phase. So, for an employee of your age and demographic profile, we know that you're, all you're really looking for is mentorship, energy drinks, and a very, very high quantity of work that will really give you an exposure to the professional environment that you're looking for. I'm 28 years old. I'm not sure what demographic profile you're thinking I fit into. There are a lot of factors there. I mean, these are people here who have families to support, and as you'll no doubt recall from our mission and vision statements, this is a family company. I watched three people who I know have young children leave here with boxes this morning. That's exactly why they were simply released. It would have been irresponsible of us to offer them a transitional opportunity. We care enough to get them out of here and back into the search for a paying position as quickly as possible. They have people who need them. Do you? Candidate exits. Interview ends. Jesus. No. That was years ago. I gotta get up. Chair. I screwed my back up a long time ago. Now I have a fancy chair that's probably screwing it up even more. Nice. I used to have a desktop. It's gone now. I just use the laptop in my room. This is the only reason I even own a TV. No cable. I tried an antenna, but all it picked up was static and infomercials. Still, I'm sure they're charging me for it somehow. Sort of use this as a de facto garbage bin for anything that won't actually rot. It's full of plastic bags at the moment. Jeez. Never use this. I'll take a shower first. Alright, so where is bathroom? Is that? Yeah, that's bathroom. Yes. Evan Winter. Do you ever have suicidal thoughts? What? You mean right now? Are you implying there are situations where you ordinarily would? I don't know. A decision like that seems like more responsibility than I could even take for myself. Sometimes I'll stand in the shower for a long time, slowly turning up the temperature of the water until it hurts. Eventually, my body seems to adjust to the pain, and I'll turn it up again and again until it hurts so much that I can't go any further. And you think about killing yourself in this way by burning yourself? 
I'm not saying that I think that is that this is what suicide is. I just think it's what suicide is like. So you think about suicide more than you have any specific plans to commit suicide yourself. Is that correct? I guess. How often do you think about these things? A lot. How long have you been thinking this way? A long time. And how does thinking about why you want to do this make you feel? Frustrated? Tired? Hopelessness? Hopeless? Reminiscent. Wow. Go to the roof of the building and jump off. What? Got a, a lot of things to do today. I'd better eat something and get to the office. Epilogue to the weight loss book I will one day write by Evan Winter. Before I wrote this book, I had reached a point where all I ever thought about was food. My life went from joking that nothing but pizza would give me relief to a life in which it was actually true. Do you know what it's like to wake up in the morning knowing that eating something terrible is the only happy thing that is going to happen to you all day? You kill yourself at some horrific job that you're lucky to have, and when it's all over, all you want to do is forget about it. People say you could stop, but you're so huge by now that you realize you would have to stop for years and years on end. And that, even then, you still might not be good enough for anything or anyone. And, by the time you do it, who can even say if anyone will be left? Still, you make a few attempts over the years, because a part of you thinks you would be a completely normal person if your weight didn't disqualify you from being one in the first place. Oof, this is cutting deep again. Sometimes it even goes well, but in the end, you're still miles behind, and that one shitty, feel-good thing you've always had starts calling you. It's calling you when you realize that she isn't interested. It's calling you when you're out with people who don't have to live this way to just be normal. It's calling you when you go out to eat with your parents, and you realize what a disappointment you are to them, and what a waste of, uh, what a waste of all that energy you were. All the time, it's calling you. Fucking hell. Of course I'll have dinner with you guys this weekend. Oh. You can eat whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. I gotta go to work, Mum. I don't know what's going on with either of them. No, I know. I know. Okay, bye. Bloody hell. Don't go to the roof. I thought I had something to eat here, but I guess not. I'll get something on the way. Sure. Should I go to the roof, or should I just keep playing? Do we... Do we do want to take the suggestion of going to the roof and jumping off the building, or shall we go to street level and head to work? Which, uh, which are we thinking? Because I figure since I've just saved, it means I could actually go to the roof and jump off. Same. Because chaos reigns. Oh, come on. You know you want to. Pussy. Sorry, I, re I realize me taking the dark joke approach is, is not good, especially what we're trying to do here, so. Um. My apologies. So it's not yet to me, yeah. If I have any fear about putting this project out, it's that somebody who is in the midst of a difficult time growing up will see this game and think that it applies to them. I'm not going to say that I was not a lot like you. I probably was. 
I've struggled with feelings of anger and depression since I was very young, no more than 12 or 13 years old. Uh, I don't need to get into the what the problems both causing and caused by this were and still are. I think the things that happen in this game make them pretty clear. It's also pretty clear where all of this is headed. But listen, the fact that you are young means in and of itself that you still have a lot of time to change things. That doesn't mean you're going to get everything you want, but I promise that you can do a lot better than you will if you give uh, yourself over to despair. It's when you get into your late 20s and early 30s, like the protagonist in this game, and like me, that a lot of the choices you made earlier can start to come seriously into play. A lot of doors can begin to close. A lot of th oh God, a lot of things start to go on without you. I've been the way I, that I am my entire life. But let me tell you something. It's different now, and I'm seeing more and more how things will only get even more difficult over even more time. In the end, that's what this game is about. An end game. Somebody whose pain has slowly risen in excess of their ability to deal with it. Somebody whose options have become totally disconnected from fantasies and regret or regrets that they can't turn away from. They can't turn away from. This game is not a game. It's a portrait. I created it to document something that I think is human and beautiful and real. And if you appreciate that, great. That's what art is. But don't get it twisted. It's about a 30-something corporate dead-ender with no youthful energy. No people his own age who haven't moved on in, in life that he can turn to. And no time or money left to change or undo any of those things. I don't care how fucked up you think your life is. If you want at least 25, that ain't you. So don't. Don't you fucking dare. Alright then, take note. My shitty life is my own doing and I need to get back on top of it to fix it, don't worry. Emphasis, that is a joke. Oh, I'm the same way. Uh, can I, can I withdraw money? Oof. the age threshold yeah but that that was the thing it was if you're below it you don't have to worry about it uh, do you understand that in many ways you're very fortunate what do you mean you've had access to education and security you're a white male there's a great deal of privilege intertwined with nearly everything about who you are I don't know I feel an awful lot like a member of that club in a name and sight only I don't have some friend with a cottage. I've never participated in any mud-based fitness challenges. And there are no adorable blondes meeting me for blind dates at ironic board game cafes. Those aren't the types of advantages I'm talking about. I know. But they are the types of advantages that education and security make worth having in the first place, aren't they? What would even change if I lived some kind of cart life for seven bucks an hour? What do you think? 
I think it would just mean being openly rejected by the types of people who only pretend to accept me now. And that isn't worth something. All I'm talking about is being something, but not being a part of it. Coffee, fruit, thanks. Have a great day. Oof. Better than a piece of the Gardner Expressway falling on your head. Guess I'll get something from the cart and hang out a while. I've already gotten something from the cart. Alright, well, let's see what's going on down here. What are you crying about? My career passion is to be is to not be a stabbed homeless guy by Evan Winter, uncertified life coach. When you sit down to do your daily one hour personal career goal, timeout, focus, affirmation, session, what amps you up to the max? What motivates and engages you to take it to the next level? I mean, we'd all like to imagine the possibility of prosperity for everyone, or at least everyone of our ethnicity with a similar educational background. But some people are winners, whereas others are merely honest. In the past, it was, it was relevant for people to look at their professional arc a lot differently. What's your five-year plan? <sighs> to be alive. Um, what's your ten-year plan? See the previous. What type of commute of, or living environment really meets your personal needs? That's asking too much. What sort of retirement situation are you envisioning? envisioning? Um, buried, not cremated. And how would you like to see your defined benefit pension plan invested? Hookers and blow. Today, however, the good news is that none of these questions matter. Today, it is simply sufficient to ask yourself if you would or would rather not drink yourself to sleep on a vent every night. Nobody likes a two hour commute, but would you rather walk 17 blocks in the dead of winter for a cup of soup? Nobody appreciates an inability to visit the dentist, but would you rather get your teeth clubbed out of uh, by a disgruntled police officer? And the people on top, they wonder how they ever lost this plot to begin with. Why did we ever give anyone anything, they say. Why didn't we just ask them if they'd rather be a stabbed homeless guy? Jesus. I don't know what to say, but I do want to give him something. Thanks, pal. You got a smoke? No, sorry, man. Probably shouldn't speak to kids, but anyway. Christmas Bullshit by Evan Winter. When I think of what it would mean to be grown up, I have an unshakable impression of going home for Christmas Eve with my wife and my infant children. There are three of them, and they're all equally infantile, but they're not triplets. It's snowing outside, even though it never snows on Christmas Eve in Toronto anymore. And as my parents open the front door that I just knocked on with one of those big brass things, even though we've never had one, and obviously I don't even know what it's called, door knocker, the heavenly aroma of an industrial bakery licks us across the face. Through all of this, my wife is so, so hot. She looks like a compilation of every girl who ever wasted my time. My father hands me a cigar and gives me the good news. We're both amazing at playing the acoustic guitar. It's a Christmas miracle. Later on that evening, I'm sitting in bed with my wife, and she tells me that she will always love me, and that we will never die. And that's all I ever think about when I think of having kids. How much of a failure I am that I cannot cause the world I have described here to exist. Fuck, man. Gage, what's your problem? Take streak out of work? Yes. Stare straight ahead. Fair enough. I will accost every single one of you. Hey, excuse me. 
All Strangers Are Entrepreneurs by Evan Winter. Hi, I noticed that you made eye contact with me for half a second and then immediately regretted it. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm a fucking asshole. I'm disgusting. Do I want to talk to you because I sincerely cherish a genuine sense of community and goodwill towards men? No. I am an absolute loser, bothering one stranger after another, an awkward revelation of my own failure. I'm looking for somebody to become my downline in a multi-level marketing scheme. Oh god, not that again. I think you ought to change religions. I'm one of those charity people who used to wear an apron so people would know to avoid me. I want to ask you out to coffee. Rub your shoulders while the dirty sleeves of my jean jacket infect your pores and then try to have sex with you before you realize that I'm unemployed. I'm that legitimately horrible and sad person that you could one day be like. The one the one a dumb story happened to. The one who got a DUI and then they would find then they found weed in my car plus the money I stole from work. My family is dead and I have no friends and I'm desperate for anybody to talk to. Even though I have nothing to say and I know that nobody likes me. Or maybe you would like me. But you don't want to know. I'm that weird, bitter asshole who barks at cashiers and hits on waitresses and holds up the universe. But I am a human being and there is nothing I can do to make God stop loving me. Everywhere I go, I tell the few people who can barely stand me the exact same thing. That everyone is just way too uptight about talking to strangers. Even though I am exactly the reason that absolutely nobody wants to. Then I say, chill out. Or some other extremely dated piece of slang that solidifies me as even more creepy. Like YOLO. This is when you realize I am trying to look at your boobs. Or your shoes. Or that I don't even have the confidence to meet your eyeline. And some type of instinct dawns on you that says, Hey, your shoelace is untied. Oh, thanks. Turn the headphones up and wait. Yes. Oops, so far. There isn't much to say about what I do for a living. We're just like everyone else. Do we work in marketing? In finance? For the government? For the people? For good? For evil? Does it matter? No matter what, if we can make money off of it, and you ask us if we can do it, we say yes. If you ask us what we do is effective, the middle managers who hired us, whose job security depends on us having been effective, will tell you yes. If you ask us if what we do is important, we'll point you in the direction of the media channel that makes a living off of reporting on our industry and they will say, yes. A lie that everybody can pay their mortgage with becomes the truth faster than you would believe. But in the end, we're really just a bunch of white people pushing a piles of money around in circles while reality occurs in parts unknown. We go to conferences, and the maids break their backs cleaning our hotel rooms. We eat at restaurants while the cooks trip and emulate each in blistering oil. Janitors have heart attacks buffing floors in a graveyard shift for 30 years, and all of this for what? Networking! Best practices! Leadership! But we don't let anyone into the network, and we don't practice anything. And we don't lead anyone anywhere but someplace fucked up, where we get paid and they get dick. Then everyone goes home and does their job the same way anyways, doing exactly whatever some boss wants. So who are we? And what do we do here? We send emails. We go to meetings. We hope to one day get high enough to become invincible and to be rewarded even when we fuck everybody and everything up. Sometimes I think, could I go my whole career without doing a single useful material thing? Did a street sweeper eclipse my social utility the day he picked up a piece of gum? I mean, probably. Who's this guy? This is Russell. He's like a less successful version of my brother. Whereas my brother gets paid handsomely to do basically nothing, and can hire all of the lawyers and accountants in the world to defend it. Russell has mastered the limited, middle-class version of this, 
being a sycophantic little shithead. He works from home so much that he doesn't even bother having a desk anymore. Are we just gonna shit on everything I do today? I mean... In fact, he really only shows up to the office to watch sports highlights on the plasma screen that we bought to facilitate better team collaboration. He's the kind of person whose enthusiasm is so fa... Facile? 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 And transparent that everything he says to you feels like an insult to your intelligence, assuming you have any. When it's all over, and everyone who actually does anything has been completely outsourced, the Russells of the world will be the last men standing in the corporate megaverse. They'll be on the conference calls to their bosses in China, going on about how everything is going great, just great, except for the following people who have really let the team down. Yeah, they're just really not hitting it. They're not getting it. I'm just looking at this stuff and, geez, I don't know. It's just not right. What do you guys think? What's up, bro? Nothing, man. Hey, can you ask your brother if he's interested in that thing I told him about? What thing? Trust me, bro. He'll know what I mean. It's an amazing opportunity. Cool. I haven't seen him in a while, but I'll let him know. Fuck. All right. The well-informed and worthwhile opinions that fill the trash cans of agencies around the world. Um, and I'd just like to point out, we are one hour away from finishing this stream. Oh, yeah. Eleven hours down. Oof. I'll drink to that. Probably not going to be able to talk tomorrow. Hey, Gage. Welcome back. Netflix. We just added a new show you might enjoy. Hellbound. Yeah, I'll be up for that. Alright, where was I? <clears throat> By Evan Winter. I like the idea of having statements that specifically talk about the impact our product has on customers. But how are we really telling our brand story? This still image of an inanimate object really needs to have a stronger sense of movement throughout. This line of meaningless rhetoric is uh, in this thing that is fundamentally about absolutely nothing really isn't adding any value. I saw this thing last night in a movie and I loved it. Our thing should be as just as good. Because even though our budget is a sixteenth of what it took to create that, I can still remember a time when it was only half. Okay, here's the deal. I don't like this thing. I don't have any real reason for disliking it. I dislike it the way that certain people don't like pickles. Or reggae. It's just idle preference. I didn't go to school for marketing or advertising, or design or writing or anything like that. I just got a job at a corporation and one day they decided to shelve me here because they figured at least there was a, a hard limit to how much damage I could do. Another possibility is that I'm actually very intelligent, but I'm the wrong gender or ethnicity, and I needed to be put somewhere prominent, but ultimately harmless. Either way, I've either come to not care that my actions are devoid of any rationale or, even more dangerously, I believe that my intuitions represent some sort of natural capability. I've either always been like this and consequently started my own company because I was incapable of working for someone else, or it happened to me after being promoted to a level high enough that people just stopped bothering to disagree with you. So you know, I'm just not sure about the blue. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. That was a mouthful.
try talking to these people. Troy. You'll have to come back in five. I'm just getting ready for a call. I actually don't even know why I'm standing here. Where did I put that proposal? I just had it. It was right here last night. I don't have time to look for it. Natasha, I need another copy of the proposal printed out. Please and thank you. I'm busy. Is Jackie here then? I need it for my call. I don't know why I don't have it. It was literally sitting here last night. This is Troy. Nobody likes Troy, including me. But I feel for him. He's married, late 40s or so, commutes two hours from the deep, deep suburbs every day and works on weekends all the time. I can't even imagine the last time he saw the house he spends every day paying for in the actual sunlight. Three kids, the wife doesn't work, and even though he's the most experienced and senior person here, there's always a palpable sense in the air that he would be the first person to wipe down the urinals if the owners told him to. I think about what he might have been like as a younger guy, at his wedding, or on one of those other things that makes you feel like the future has a future. Natasha. Oh, Evan, how are you doing? Hey Natasha, how's it going? Okay. Okay, talk to you later I guess. Okay. Nobody knows much about Natasha. She can't really speak English. She does a bunch of our administrative work. She couldn't possibly make very much money. And she has a way of smiling at you that discourages any kind of follow-up questions whatsoever. She looks like she's in her late 40s, but something tells me she might look a lot older than she actually is. It's not that she has some kind of hard chiseled beauty, though. She just looks like she's been through more than she should have. And where they found her? Who knows? What about Tori? Hey, message me. Okay. Message local logging in online. Tori, sorry, it's just too early in the morning to have Natasha glaring at me. Sure. What's up? Nothing. What did you do all weekend? Did you go out on Friday? Yeah, I went to the Jackson right after work till three in the morning. Don't remember it and never meant to. Don't start. I'm starting. You live in downtown Toronto, have all the free time in the world, and you go to a sports bar in a chain motel. Why are you even alive? I don't know. I'm not into this hipster bullshit. What hipster bullshit? You mean cool and interesting places? Drinking is drinking. What's the difference? Between sales convention tourists and people your own age? Is that a serious question? And I am not a hipster, even if saying so proves it. No kidding. Your parents aren't nearly rich enough. If you hate money, I can help you with that. All I'm saying is that the worst thing about nice things are the people who can afford them. Nice things would be better off with you? I don't know. It's just sad. But you love being sad. It's cool to be sad. No, it isn't. It's just sad. Transcript. Late, show, uh, late night show in progress. Guest. Evan Winters. Host. I mean, I'm a little surprised you aren't out there going out with all kinds of chicks. Well, for a long time, women really only hurt me. I mean, it wasn't their fault at all. It was really just the natural outcome of somebody who looks like me being interested in them. You weren't, uh, doing too well, huh? You have to understand what it does to a person to warp that emotion for so long. To turn something that is supposed to be beautiful into nothing but a signal of imminent misery. Well, we all know what can uh, what that can be like. No, I actually don't think that we all do. Most people, they win some, they lose some, and it's all just some fucking song on the radio. That's a lot different than knowing for certain that your love is something that is going to hurt people you care about, and that it will only hurt you too. Still, you've got to try. No. The only thing you've got to try is to never feel a goddamn thing for anybody. Because you don't want to make them feel awkward. And you damn sure don't want their pity. So what do you do? Nothing, really. You try to be cool until you can't stand it anymore. And then you just stop talking to them. Boy, you're a real pal. Oh, I know. And believe me. 
Realizing that you can either be a bad guy or a non-guy is the point where you just stop talking to women completely. Oh. So you stopped talking to women you were attracted to completely? Well, hmm. Sometimes you meet somebody and you just don't have a choice. Maybe all that pain just seems worth going through it all over again. Maybe you think things will be different this time. No. You know better than that. You just... I don't know. I know it's really stupid and I know it isn't even true. But I really, really love her. Well, uh... We'll be right back after these messages with Evan Winter, the stupid liar. What? Can you come to that meeting tomorrow? What? Oh, sure. You're too funny. Tori, I try to work. Please be quiet. Sorry, Natasha. Oh no, Evan, you don't worry. What a bitch. Paulie Young Senior, senior Partner Chairwoman. Two, all staff. Subject, my resignation. Live for your dreams. Priority, hi. Dearest employees, it is with a bittersweet mixture of joy and sadness that I must announce my... my dis divestment and resignation from the company, effective immediately. While I would have preferred to be available to help with the numerous surprise obstacles that this will present, the timing of my departure co coincided with exi existing travel plans that would not have been changed without putting my elite passenger status on Air Canada at risk. When I began my career as an employee at an agency similar to ours over the 15 years ago, things were much more dif difficult. All of my peers seemed to question my opinions, dismiss my ideas, oh bloody hell my throat, <coughs> and even make faces at me if I was some kind of stupid idiot. For me, the meaning of this was clear. I was much more capable, creative and out of the box than everybody around me, a true maverick. With the agreement of my husband and his financial support, I founded the organization. The point of this story is clear. You've got to live your values. You've got to choose the life that you want to live and make it happen, just like I did. I've often asked myself why all of you seem to be so stressed out and miserable, as if some horrifically ignorant force, oblivious to its own recklessness, is compelling you to do things that don't make any sense. That just sounds like work. Someday, I hope you'll realize that you can do whatever you want. You just have to go for it and have the <laughs> bank account full enough to uh, fund it. The next chapter in my life, for example, will be through a line of motivational handbags uh, that I message deleted. Is there an extra stapler in there? I can't find my stapler. Sorry, man. I'm not touching any of this shit. Uh, right, so she's gone. Who is this? Roy Parsons, President and CEO. Two, sender. Subject, vacation alert. Please note that I will be out of the office this week, Monday through Thursday, inclusive. If you are writing about the numerous large projects that have key deliverabilities, uh, diver, deliverables due on Friday afternoon, please note that my calendar on Friday morning is limited due to a networking job brunch. If you are a client, please rest assured that I will cursor, cursorily Review your work 10 minutes before you are supposed to have it. Blame others for my total lack of context regarding what it even is, and ask that it be completely restarted and refinished in a manner, in a matter of hours, regardless of the merit or necessity of my proposed improvements to it. I bought my job and I am a clown. In my bottom desk drawer, though, is a god-awful television pilot I wrote about how I am a genius who brings up magical Finishing touch to all the work of a company who is overjoyed to bask in my creative glory despite my near continuous absence. Stream 11 hours, wow. Yeah, I know, right, Gigi? How you doing, man? Um, my petulant childishness and my total lack of solidarity with the people I am supposed to be leading. There is a scene where a beautiful 22-year-old graphic design intern tells me how artistically inspired she was by the mixtape I gave her of all my favorite bands, including the one I used to play in. Doing good, how are you doing? I am knackered, man. The, the next 45 minutes cannot come quick enough. I'm ready for bed. <laughs> Seriously, I have no idea how fucking retarded I am. Very truly, Roy Parsons. Ugh. 
President, CEO, Chief Creative Officer, Ideas Guy. And an utter cunt. Alright, yeah, I should probably do some work. I'm gonna talk to Tori first. And where's Jackie? They already did. Do you have work to do? Exactly. Definitely will. Um, don't know who I'm supposed to talk to about Jackie. I've pretty much spoken to everyone. This is the couch for guests and clients to sit on while they wait to see somebody. It's the only well kept piece of furniture in the office. Uh. I don't get it. Who's Jackie and where am I supposed to see her? A real plant, the one in the back is fake. Fair enough. Oh, there's Jackie. Oh, I'm sorry. Patient scratch chan transcript. I need some water. Bloody hell. Evan Winter. Alright. Oh, bloody hell. <clears throat> Patient. There's somebody I work with, not gonna lie, even though I put 100 quid to it, I'm pleasantly surprised that we've already reached the goal. I know, right? Uh, you ood nauseam midge, you're all generous bastards. And uh, I've still got to add the two um, uh, the two donations from Glenn slash Alice and from Blind. Uh, but yeah, as I say, I'll do that as soon as they clear. There's somebody I work with. She's sick. It's the kind of sick that doesn't quite get you on disability. It just fucks with you dead in the middle of it. Being able to have a job but not able to be any good at it. She misses a lot of work for medical appointments? Is that still what you're calling them? All I've ever seen is somebody wait for two hours, wait another six hours for a test, and then wait another three hours to find out it was inconclusive. Where's the medicine? Where's the appointment? You're upset about this. Most people are upset about this. No, I mean you're upset about it in a way that you usually aren't. You care about this person. And the story isn't noise, it's different. You were there. She was alone. I was around. Do you really feel that way about it? I was in a situation where refusing to help somebody would have made me very bad. That doesn't make me very good. And the last thing I want is to end up even more involved in it. Right. Except you know that it, that it might matter if you aren't. I'm fine, I know. I'll be out later. Is there a meeting in here? I don't think so. I'll check. No, don't. I just need a minute. You take your minute there, Jackie. An oversized recycling bin of chart paper by Evan Winter. Oh god, more reading. <clears throat> a few years ago, the bosses went to a three-day $5,000 leadership seminar and came back convinced that the reason the company wasn't growing was because people weren't collaborative enough. Accordingly, with no collaboration, it was determined that everything anyone said in a meeting had to be not only written down, but written down such that arrows could just uh, could jut out of it, allowing any free associations about it to be captured as well. This policy lasted for precisely one meeting, after which time the walls of the room recovered from floor to ceiling with graph paper containing what appeared to be the indecipherable corporate thought of mental hospital. The paper was then torn down and placed into this bin. 
where it remains to this day. The financial problems that the company had been having would later be linked to excessive overhead in the area of leadership development. Of course, this leadership development was never recorded as compensation. And this, among other things, were not factored into the deeply disappointing salaries the owners were then forced to draw for that year. Salaries which, of course, were ample evidence of the total impossibility of providing any employees with bonuses or raises. And yet, to be honest, this story gives me a good feeling, because I know that nothing this fucked up can go on forever. Jesus. Alright, now I can work, apparently. Yes, work. Asian strand transcript. Evan, you right, kid? Evan Winter. You talk about depression, but it doesn't seem to affect your ability to work an eight-hour day. I treat people who can't even get out of bed. There's something about being around people who aren't fucked up that makes me a different person, I guess. Maybe I feel like looking weak in front of normal people is the saddest thing that anyone could possibly do. So what changes when you leave? Well, there's nobody around, I guess. And what happens then? I don't know. I find myself at stupid places, doing stupid things. Are you saying you have no memory of how you get there? No, I remember how. I just never remember why. Sure. Clothing. You know, I really like clothes. It's too bad that none of them fit me. But maybe buying some things that I actually would want to wear would motivate me to lose weight. It's probably exactly the thing I need to do. You can't say it doesn't make perfect sense. I don't want to be this way, but it seems like being even more this way is the way is the only way to stop me being like it. Junk. This is stupid. Why am I here? Why do I do this? I don't even really like any of the genres that any of these new games are in. I guess the reviews for some of them are pretty good, though. Sure. Don't even like these things anymore. All of them are practically identical to me at this point. This will be the last time. Think it fucking matters to me? You think it makes any difference at all? What? Turn the headphones up and wait? Yes. Oof. Patient's transcript, Evan Winter. Doctor, when do you feel the absolute lowest? The moment I walk in the door, no question. Jeez. Why do you think that is? Why feel worse off when you get home than any, at any other time? You know, I think our generation is growing up and growing and going down. It's not just in my imagination that things are getting worse. We should all be in a period of our lives where we're building and learning and doing new things, coming into our own as professionals, making more money, and I... Look, we've talked all about this before. I don't know. I guess it just all feels the same, day in and day out. Except you know that in some way you're falling apart. Well, who isn't? You know, it isn't like I never tried. It's just that all my trying never really amounted to much. But how many people really changed the path they started going down when they started out? It's like the fundamental idea of our entire culture. That you can change. Hey, you can do whatever you want. And your problem is what exactly? That nobody is keeping records on how true or untrue that is? Actually, I think they are, but people can't even, I mean, most people can't deal with what kind, with that kind of hopelessness. Maybe. 
Or maybe they have a way of dealing with it that you, that you just don't know anything about. Do you think I don't know what you keep trying to bring this conversation back around to? I get it. I'm lonely. I'm sad and I'm lonely and this is why I'm in therapy. Are you happy now? Is this what psychi uh, psychiatrists do? Just keep needling at people until they simpli uh, simplify their problems to something you can write a prescription for? How should I know? You're the one making all of this up. I'm not even real. You just imagine all of this to try to romanticize being a drain circling nobody. You saw a therapist one time and he told you to come back when you had real problems. I'm just like all these other stupid scenarios that you play out in your head. Like being a creative writing professor or how cool and melancholy you'll be on a talk show and all of this nonsense. What is it really for? I don't know. It's all to avoid telling yourself that you're nothing. That you're anything more than some fat, booze, sugar, and porn addicted idiot who hasn't who wasted every opportunity he ever had. Oof. Getting dark now. It's funny how I was always like this, and yet it got worse at the same time, you know? You live this fucked up type of way, and you just slowly coast deeper and deeper into it until your whole life is just this weird paradoxical mix of desperate survival and slowly killing yourself at the same time. To be honest, I completely agree with you. I think you should end it. You, you think? It's either that or live a shitty, terrible life. Other people don't want other people to do it. But whose shoes do they have to live in? What the fuck do they know? If you want to live in all this agony, you go ahead. But stop telling yourself it's because you still think you can do any better. And start admitting that it's actually because you're too scared to do what you know you should. Jesus. You don't want to inconvenience people. You don't want to make them sad. You want them to remember you as that funny guy to just have around. Or to keep wishing you could measure up to some fantasy that you should have grown out of ten years ago. But you don't have anything to look forward to. It's just going to be the same stupid shit every day for the rest of your goddamn life. So stop wasting my time. Go to the roof of the building and jump off. No. Fine. But someday you're going to wake up one morning and even all of the things that pulled you down won't make you feel any better. In fact, you won't feel anything at all. And do you even know why? Because nobody who isn't obligated to, or who isn't pathetic themselves, even fucking cares that you are alive. In the end, nothing you can do will keep that from sinking in. I know. Jesus. Oof. Years go by. can't take this anymore, I can't take any of it, this the same stupid shit. This fucking alarm clock, I fucking hate this shit. Destroy everything in the apartment, okay. They don't have a goddamn alarm clock in my phone, fucking VIP inbox. Everything in the goddamn universe to keep anybody from getting a goddamn minute of peace. time waste of fucking life. Fancy chair for being a fuckhead who never gets off his ass fucking day. Like I really need it because just because of my back. Like I've got any reason to not just be popping pills all the time. The rest of the wretched fucking universe. Like I can't just lay in my fucking bed all night like a goddamn vegetable. What's the different e anyways? I don't even fucking get home before 7 p.m. most nights. What the fuck am I getting home for, even when I do? To just sit in this fucking chair. Sit in this chair and to be a fucking jerk off on Facebook and watch YouTube. Because it isn't everything just so fucking fascinating. 
Flat screen, neo yuppie bullshit. All you have to do is destroy everything by Evan Winter. You know, the problem with you is not that you're a gutless, craven pussy who can't get off his ass. No, your problem is that you have too much stuff. Consumer electronics are your problem. The internet is your problem. All these unbelievably entertaining things and you're just hopelessly addicted to all of them. That's why you need to cancel your home internet. Cancel your high definition cable, rip apart your $2,000 gaming PC and throw it in the garbage. And leave yourself with nothing but a bunch of crappy outdated console systems because you want to be a different person. A month later you'll be sitting in your blanked out apartment with nothing to do and you'll finally say to yourself, it's time to get out there and in the world. I want to meet strangers in cafes, I want to join a kickball league, but not long after this you will find yourself playing those crappy, outdated consoles every night and punching yourself for wrecking your own shit. Just because you want to be a different person doesn't mean you will be able to become one. Fuck you. Fuck you. Doesn't matter now. Just eat shit like I usually do. Alcoholic vomit is coolness leaving the body by Evan Winter. A lot of fat people think that they are hot shit because they drink a lot. They know that nobody in a social situation really wants to talk to them, so they hang out with each other and get totally fucking wasted. Sometimes, if they're rich or funny, a few people will find them endearing enough to actually speak to. By and large, however, they just get completely annihilated and go home to throw up into their cracked seat toilets. But all of this is an outsider's perspective. The real reason fat people drink is because it actually makes them feel confident. And confidence is, uh, to a 300 pound piece of human shit is all they ever wanted. You feel levitation, carelessness, acceptance. And then, one day, you feel bad enough when you're not drunk that you realize that drinking actually makes you feel the way that regular people feel all the time. Needless to say, this is when you know it's time to mature into an older and wiser person and switch to antidepressants. Jesus. God. I'm gonna stop drinking. I'm gonna quit this job. I'm gonna stop everything. It doesn't even do anything. Why don't I care anymore? Why don't I care anymore? Go to the roof of the building and jump off. You say, by Evan Winter, you say you refuse to be the creature you are and go on living. It sloshes around in your skull like acid, aching from the moment you wake up to the minute you stand still and breathe through the water to the hours you lay in bed at night. Shifting through one piece of your breaking body to another, you say, you say, you say, you say you won't go on, not alone. Not like this. You say it isn't human. That it isn't safe. You say it isn't natural to exist in nothing but contemplation of the joy you will never have, however secure you may be for the moment. That too much can be undone by a lost and angry person in a single decision. You say you're tired of the pain and sickness that stole your youth. Say you've had enough of waiting to see what part of your mind or body collapses next. You say you won't submit to the incomprehensible object that all of it is slowly turning you into. A target of awkward silence and false hope. A wedding funeral family asterisk. Some careerist article by some careerist arsehole on how society is in full scale collapse because the government won't pay for your pointless, stupid, unlivable life. If you say so. You say you won't suck off the sad and stupid future. You say you won't take another job just like the one you just lost. You won't buy the next new cell phone and you won't ju and you won't keep meeting up with the same old people who all do the same old things. You say you won't do it. You swear to God you won't do it. So go on, say it. Say it to yourself. Get drunk and say it to your friends. Say it to someone you wish cared about you and actually believe it makes you look romantic instead of ridiculous. Oof. 
Say it on Twitter or Tumblr until it's all that anybody believes about you, who you are. Say it like the world won't go on without you, or that you have anything to lose but yourself. Say it for the sake of never doing anything until the day comes when everything you said so much about losing is actually lost. The day that everything you said would happen actually happens, and the only choice left is either something worse, the grinding years of living through it without the heart of anything, or nothing at all. When there is nothing left to say, what will you say instead? You know what? Fuck this. I'm fine. I'm going to work. Enough of this bullshit. I'm just going to be different. I'm just going to be fine being myself, and it's going to be fine. I can find my own way to being somebody better. With all that stuff gone, all I have to do now is do something good. Just a day at a time. Someday, this whole part of my life will just be a tiny memory. God, what have I done? Oof. Let's see what this guy has to say. Got a smoke bird? No, I don't smoke. Pal, the fucking sun is shining. The fucking birds are singing. And you get a look on your face like the fucking world is falling apart. Right, sure. Eh. Nothing a blowjob and a few million bucks wouldn't fix, huh? Fucking jerk. You know, there is a difference between the white guys in college shirts who actually get offered that, and the ones who don't. Whatever. You don't get a fucking smoke. Just fuck off. You know what? I give you money every fucking day, and you don't even know who the fuck I am. What the fuck is wrong with you? Fuck off. You fuck off. Jesus. Why are you antagonizing? Why is everyone called Driver? Ridiculous, what kind of person needs to buy simple shit like this off a card every day? Oh jeez, lots of people on today. Gotta help me, I can't keep up anymore. Slow down, man, what happened? I went to them, and I asked them why they basically handed Russell my promotion. You know what they said? Whatever they said, it's bullshit. They put Russell in because he's an evil, buck-passing little shithead. Perfect for their first ever layer of middle management. Don't sweat it, I'll tell you what they told me. They said I need to step it up. So I've been here until nine every night stepping it up, but it's impossible. And now Tori is leaving? Who do you think is going to end up with all of her work? Me. Troy, stop. You even listening to what I'm saying? There's nothing you can do. It doesn't matter. I'm not as stupid as you think, Evan. You think I don't know what you're saying? Of course I do. But it's easy for you. You've got the luxury of being right. You aren't paying even more for divorce lawyers than you are in child support. Doesn't mean it's not a waste of your time, man. God damn it. All I'm saying is that you can't expect that promotion now that Russell's in there. I mean, it's done. He got it. And it's not like they are even around to see how fucked up he is, so I wouldn't count on him losing it. Promotion? Who the heck is talking about the promotion? They're gonna fire me. That's what you gotta help me with, some of this stuff. I'm begging you. They're not gonna fire you, man. You're the most experienced person here. They need... I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say, man, but you can't live like this. Fine. Don't help me. You just wait 10 years, see if the world career even means anything to you anymore. Or if you find yourself dusting off the resume every six months because everybody wants to hire some 23 year old. I didn't say I wouldn't help you. Some 23 year old who can pump out a million miles of dog shit an hour because they don't eat no shit. Hey Betsu, sorry man. As you do, it, how's stream going? Stream is going good, man. We are 20 minutes away from the 12 hour mark and me finishing and going to bed. This, uh, this game has sort of dragged me in a bit. How are you doing, man? How was your sleep? 
and the client doesn't care because they've never seen anything but shit. Well, it's not all bad. At least you don't have that huge commute anymore. Or payments on that house out there. I miss that house every day of my life. I miss my wife. I miss my kids. I miss everything. I miss everything about all of it. Oof. I don't want to talk about this. Please excuse me. Your free trial is about to end by Evan Winter. You do realize that the kind of life which only happened to other people for most of your existence is coming for you too, right? Good thanks mate, sleep was okay, not enough, but I'll manage it, Ooh, I know that feeling. Sure, it all makes sense now, it's just a graph on a page, just a short term contract instead of a full time job. Just a little leaning into what you are otherwise told is a very healthy retirement fund from a person who got paid to tell you that. But someday someone is going to fire you for that la for the last time, not because you did anything wrong, not because you ran off to some uh, to open some goddamn cupcake store, and not even because they actually can't afford to keep you. It will simply be because your life got too complex and expensive for what it was actually worth to anyone but you. If you don't become either rich or in charge of a bunch of people by the time you're 40. You might as well blow your fucking brains out for all the world will think of you. Even at 35, you'd better still be sexy. I like to think so. If you don't even know how all this will come together by the time you're 30, you're already so far behind somebody who does that I can't see how someone who doesn't would ever catch up. And then, for the sake of our collective sanity, you will be erased. Because nobody can give a fuck about it you if you don't exist to give a fuck about. I mean, look at you. You're old. You're bringing down our Friday spirit. You can't drink all night. You aren't fun to look at. And you can't help anybody get ahead with anything. You're upsetting all the 20-somethings who don't even get paid. Who don't even get paid. Don't you think the least we can do is provide them with a workplace that resembles a television show? And no offense, but if you have kids who don't get to go to daycare because you didn't marry rich, nobody wants to know about it. If you have some disease that is eating you alive because you have no medical coverage, it's better for everyone, everybody, if you don't say so. <clears throat> Alrighty then, you be safe. If you don't think you can be cheerful or at least quiet, I hope you know how much we all resent you being here. Because this is not a place that has anything to do with anything but celebration. Celebrating success, driving forward with growth, powering ahead through innovation and smashing through it with remorseless joy. Dear de I don't know how you say that, fucking French. Who would seriously consider even being anywhere else? And maybe, just maybe, you used to understand that. But when you were in some sort of loser cocoon, Still all bright with your maybes and some days. But all you do now is remind everyone that nothing lasts forever. And who wants to think about that? Jesus. Yeah, hey Alyssa, I gotta talk to Russell today. Is he in the office until five? Probably, I don't know. After they made Russell the general manager, he fired Natasha because he said she couldn't speak English. At which point, of course, he simply replaced her with somebody who refused to. The rest of us would re complain, probably, except she isn't even re really supposed to help all of us the way that Natasha did anyways. She's strictly supposed to be Russell's executive assistant. And of course, yeah, right? Uh, oh, you mean Minecraft? Yes, definitely. I was then waking up early to creep here. <laughs> Spent most of the time making that path in your love shack, Jesus. And of course you can see where all of this is headed. We figure they've already at least made out. The only job she's actually doing here is telling him everything that she thinks we're saying about him. Not that we aren't saying it. Hey, what's going on? Hey, not too much. Is this your last day or are you coming in for that, uh, for that last handoff meeting next week? No, I can't. Me and Danny are going to our engagement trip tomorrow. And then I start the new job as soon as I get back. That's too bad. We were really a team on that. I know the client liked to see us together. They'll understand. It's just a job. Yeah. They'll forget about us before you know it. 
Damn, Tori. You sound more like me every day. After all this time together, that's not what I wanted. I know it isn't. I didn't see you out last night. We should get a drink after work. I mean, we should all go. I don't think that's a good idea. Anyways, you're a really talented guy, so good luck, Evan. Yeah, you too. Oof. The way people walk away from you by Evan Winter. If love exists in the ability to make another person happy, how can someone who can't make anybody happy ever really be in love? How do you tell someone who asked why you never do anything that the reason is that you can feel your bones grinding together when you walk? How do you tell someone who asks why you're so tired that you can't sleep without pain? How do you tell someone who only smiles at you when you make them laugh that there is so much more you want to say? How can you look at photos on her desk of someone giving her everything she wants and not be thankful that somebody can? How sick have you become that you don't even realize that not everything is about you? If love exists in the ability to make another person happy, how can someone who can't make anybody happy ever really be in love? If love exists in the ability to make another person happy, how can someone who can't make anybody ever really ha be in love? Anybody happy ever really be in love? How? 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 Oof. Painful, sir. Painful. Uh, let's see what Jackie's up to now. What's wrong? I texted you last night. I'm sorry I didn't get it. Were you alright? You didn't have to go to hospital, did you? No. You know what? Never mind. I didn't get your message. I didn't even get home until 10 and then I passed out. Fine. You know what? I thought we agreed that, that the whole thing was just stupid. It was just... whatever. It's 9.30 in the morning. Is this really the time or place that you want to talk about this? No. No, you're right. I'm stupid. So stupid and I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. The Stories That We Love by Evan Winter I don't believe for a second that you ever cared about me at all. People look at you and me and think we're the same. They don't even know how right they are. They don't know how much we both wish we could actually be in love. They don't know how we both grew up and thought our lives would be real. That we would get married and talk retirement and read in bed while footsteps crept down our hallways. They don't know how disgusting we feel when we're together. Rubbing all over each other while you regret it and I'm trying to think of somebody else. They don't know how reluctantly it starts, all indifferent and tiresome. They don't know how stupid we feel when the night wears off and the sun comes up and we're just lying there burning off whatever residual intimacy is still hanging in the air as a way of trying to make it all less awkward. Shitty kisses and dragging blankets twisted into each other like sinking life jackets, literally hugging with regret. I am so, so sorry. They probably think we talk it out. They imagine some type of light crystallizes between us. That we start to believe in something beautiful within ourselves because it has the to exist if somebody else can see it. And they do because, uh, do that because we love that story more than anything, don't we? The idea that we can transcend our ugliness through sheer force of honesty. That we can magically transform into a writhing pile of fat, desperate bodies with the power to fuck and suck the complete bullshit out of each other. Because that will be the thing that sets us free from wanting someone that we actually want. Because that will be the thing that will make all of the mistakes we've made just a part of something that was meant to be. Because we are so horrific that what we really want is for someone not to love us, not to need us, but to forgive us for being so wretched. They really think that, and why not? After all, it's the only way that everybody might actually have a chance. Except they don't. And I don't. And you don't. And we don't. So stop looking at me like you didn't know what this was. Oof. Jesus. Thought I told you to come back later, bro. I got shit to do. Alright, but we gotta talk about, like, multiple projects. Did your email go down again? You gotta fix that right away, man. Nobody knows why you aren't writing them back. Don't tell me what to do, bro. What? You thought I was too small time for you to, uh, to hook me up with your brother. Don't think I don't remember it. 
And I bet you feel stupid now, huh? Guess I'm not too small time to be your fucking boss. You ever think maybe I did tell him about you? And that he's the one who thought you were too small time? Yeah, right. I'm fucking watching you, dickhead. You need to step it up out there. Or you're going down. Excuse me? Shit, I'm doing you a favor just keeping you on. Are you now? You think I can't get somebody for two thirds your salary? Use half of that to save the company a little money? And then tack the other half onto my salary for being such a good manager? That's business, pal. How do you figure any of that money is even going to exist in the first place without us doing the actual work? Is that business too? Shit, who cares? Welcome back, Venny. By the time we sell this shit, we're moving on anyways. Doesn't matter who's satisfied or not. With some top sales guys like me, we just keep rolling. That's your big plan? Sure. What the fuck is satisfaction anyway? It's not like anything we do actually does anything but help a bunch of retards piss on and play politics with each other. Yeah, but, but nothing, bro. You want to have it both ways? And you want to shit all over what we do here but still think of yourself as some kind of hero? But it ain't like that. If this shit is fucked up, then you're fucked up. And you're fucked up. So what? That makes me lucky to have a part in all this, even with Natasha gone, with Troy losing his mind, with Jackie half dead half of the time, and Tori getting poached? Poached? You think you motherfuckers are getting poached on my motherfucking watch? Please. Tori's leaving because of you, you fat fuck. Jesus. What? I mean, I'm not going to cross you off over it, because she's definitely a piece of ass, so I know you're where you're coming from. But shit, what are you thinking, bro? Not exactly in your league. What are you freaking out about, man? It's not a huge thing, and everybody knows. I mean, anybody can tell. I gotta... I gotta go. What? I quit. I gotta go. I mean, I quit. I have some chick who's leaving? Damn, bro, you really do need to get laid. Oh, I just... Anyways, thanks for all your hard work and shit. What are you gonna do now? Shit? I know. You should work for your brother, dude. You know what, Russell? You're literally really fucked up. You're really, really fucked up. I'm fucked up, motherfucker. I got a girl. I go to the gym. I have a business plan. I do cool shit on the weekends while you're killing yourself some job that you just quit. Over nothing. I'm fucking living life while you're wasting yours wishing it was something else. How the fuck am I fucked up? You're just a pussy. Get the fuck out of here. God damn. Patient transcript. Evan Winter. Doctor, how does it feel to be completely worthless? To know that everything you've ever worked on is completely stupid and that all you've ever done is hurt people. Stop talking to me. Because you want things for them. From them. Even though you're disgusting and completely kidding yourself if you think any respectable person would have anything to do with you. I told you, stop talking to me. And then, even when you find people who don't think you're disgusting, you're just a liar. Right. You're too weak to take responsibility for any of it. You'd rather just lay in bed unemployed with no friends lying to your family about how everything is alright. <laughs> Calm down, then. Just walling yourself off into a corner until everyone forgets about you. Then, maybe, you figure you'll get the courage to end all of this nonsense. Admit to yourself that you're done. And please, make no mistake about this. You are done. You missed your shot. Everything has moved on without you. You could have studied in school and actually done something meaningful with your life. But no. Always too fucking lazy. Always another video game to go out and buy. No self-control, no self-respect, no nothing. Always another reason. Always something else. You are a bad person. And you don't deserve to live. You know this. That's why you're in all this pain. I can't change that. No. But you can stop it. Time passes.
get out of the roof of the building and jump off. I've never felt the wind like this before. It makes me feel completely outside of my body. There is a part of me that doesn't want to do this, but I've never heard it so softly. I guess all I really want to say to everyone is, yeah, 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 you know? Because it all just goes on, doesn't it? If I did it today, if I did it tomorrow, if I waited another 10 years of going through the same motions with nothing going on except for things getting worse, what would the difference even be? Your family dies, the world falls apart, the rich get richer, the ugly stay ugly. It all gets faster and harder until we can't remember what we used to be. And so what if it does? So what if we do? I'm never going to get what I want. And it's too late to ever become the person I wanted to be. If it was ever really possible at all. I may, and I may not be a person who has courage. I might be the big, biggest opposite of that in the world. But I can find a moment. Maybe I could have found some better ones. But it doesn't matter now. What does it mean to be an impossible person? To be someone who could not have ever been happy. How could it mean anything? There are things we will never make sense of, no matter how hard we try. When I try to think of things I could, uh, could have been different, I feel like so many things come to mind that I can't even think of anything. I just picture myself being happy, laughing, being somebody else, but I can't actually imagine why it would have happened like that. I feel like I should say something here, something profound or interesting, some type of summation of my life or something I've learned, but I can't. It was all worthless and selfish and I never loved anyone or anything. All I ever did was want to. It was nothing. Everything I've been and done has been for nothing. And as I turn around to look back, I feel relieved that nobody is here. That there isn't anybody standing there who has no choice but to pretend to care. But it feels good. I feel an unbelievable burden come off my shoulders. I feel lighter than I have in years. Like I can finally stop fighting. Like I can fly. I was right about everything. I was right about everything. Well, damn, and the timing worked out. We have just hit the 12 hour mark. God damn, that, that was intense. That it was. You've achieved all achievements, one of one, actual sunlight. Thank you. Oof. Well, today has been a journey. Um, let me quickly just see who we are going to raid. 
Uh, well, there's only one person online. Warrior Rio. Let's um, just hit the refresh, but I think it's Rio. Yeah. We are going to raid Rio. Um, thank you everyone for joining me on this 12 hour stream to whew, some uh, dark places. Uh, hopefully, it's brought about some awareness. Um, and as a bonus, we broke the goal of 300 pounds. Hell, we beat that in an hour and a half of streaming. Um, thank you to everyone that donated. Ven, Ood, Nauseam, Midge, Blind, and uh, Alice and Glenn. Um, I'll be transferring those donations that accidentally went to me to the actual donation uh, in a couple days when it's cleared. Yeah. Um, let me put in the raid command because I, I, I really need some time to process this and uh, go to bed. Oof. So there is the raid command. We are raiding Warrior Rio. Great bloke. Um, we can give some uh, some company to and some views. Oof. Um, again, anyone that is suffering, definitely reach out. There are places like Mind all over the world that can help. Oof. And after that, I feel like contacting one myself. Oof. Uh, for those of you with days ahead, I hope you have a good day. Oh, that is hitting. Oof. I think a 12 hours are caught up on me. And those of you with days ahead, I hope you have a good... No, with those of you with nights ahead, I hope you have a good night. I forgot my own catchphrase. Or end line. Let's, um... Let's go show Rio some love. And I'll catch you guys later. I'm not going to be streaming tomorrow night. I am wrecked after this and need a day off at least. So um, I'll catch you guys uh, later. Uh, speak to you in the Discord. Take care. See us.